Okay. So determinants and Kramer's rule. Really a couple things involved in this lesson. And um, all of them have implications of with working with matrices the rest of the way through. So really important stuff today. Determinants is one thing and then Kramer's rule is another. Um, the determinants are aspects of each matrix. And we'll go through that first. And then Kramer's rule is a way to solve a system of equations, right? So if you remember back to systems, we said you can solve a system of equations four ways. We said you can graph it, not very efficient. You can use substitution, you can use elimination, or you can use matrices. Well, Kramer's rule is one of the methods of using a matrix to solve a system. There are actually a few methods that you can use a matrix to solve a system. Kramer's rule is just one of those. All right, so let's first off deal with determinants. You got to know how to do a determinant to be able to use Kramer's rule. That's why they're put together. All right, what is a determinant? It's simple. It's the value of a process. That doesn't say a whole lot. It's it's the value of a process involving matrices. Here's the bottom line. It's a means to an end. So again, to solve a system using Kramer's rule, we need to know the determinants. So therefore, it's a means to an end. If we can figure out the determinants, we can then use the determinants and Kramer's rule to figure out the value of the variables. It's a means to an end. So what we'll do is we'll give you a matrix and say find the determinant. Quite honestly, we're just checking to see if you know how to get a determinant. The, the value is really meaningless apart from using it for something else. Okay, but that's the idea. All right, only square matrices have determinants. So there's a limit here. There's a limit. But if you think about this, when we talk about system of equations, to solve an equation with two variables, you must have two equations with two variables. Now you have a two by two, a square matrix. To solve an equation with three variables, you must have three equations with those three, those three variables. Now you have a three by three. To solve an equation with four different variables, you need four equations with those four different variables, but now you have a four by four, et cetera. Get in the real life, you know, go to school, become a mathematician, and then get hired by NSA or some other company and go into their, you know, go work for that company and figure out all these mathematical formulas. And you might have 10 variables and you're going to need 10 equations with 10 variables and you're going to solve them with a matrix. Are you going to solve them by hand? No, software is going to solve the matrix for you, but you'll know the concepts and that's what we're trying to understand here. All right, uh, determinants, there's a couple different symbols for them. You know, the first situation is just DET, and then A, that means the determinant of matrix A. The second is just to use a capital D. And we don't mean by that matrix D, we mean the determinant of whatever matrix we're talking about. Matrix A, matrix C, matrix X, whatever. Um, the third is to the third is to put what looks like absolute value symbols around the capital letter, but they don't mean the absolute value of matrix A. That means the determinant of matrix A. So you'll see it three different ways. You just got to be aware of that. Uh, if you're taking the uh, ACT, who knows which of the three ways you'll see it. Taking the ACT, who knows? But that's the situation. It can come up three different ways. Okay, how do you basically do it? The basic idea is to find the value by multiplying the diagonals. The diagonals. You got to multiply on a diagonal. To make it more fun, when you multiply left to right, you start out positive, but when you go right to left, you start out negative.
one and two don't mean anything really by themselves, to be honest with you. Um, nor does really the fact of the angles. It's just something there to look back. When you're looking back through your notes and trying to remember what to do, it's just there, hopefully, to trigger. A two-by-two two isn't very hard at all. So a two-by-two, two, you got to multiply the diagonals. So if we go left to right, there's only one diagonal going left to right, and that's an A times the B, right? So left to right, A times B, you're going on a diagonal. Working back the other way, though, whenever you go right to left, you've got to go negative. So use a negative sign in a parentheses here. And now we're going C times D. So this is the pattern, and this is what you've got to know. You've got to know this pattern for a 2 by 2. And you'll get 2 by 2s, and they'll come up a pretty good amount. So just make sure that you know two by twos okay you gotta you gotta know that pattern that's got to be in your brain that's got to be there two by twos okay so pretty simplistic example here with d oh that's great c d d all right whatever first edition notes that's life so if you were going to do d i'll do it the long way though you guys we would be doing this in our head right and we would write an eight and then you would be thinking a negative 3 times a positive 5. But again, I'm just going to, for clarity of my note's sake, I'm just going to do it that way. <coughs> you guys, here's what I would see on your paper, hopefully. Hopefully I would see 8 minus 15 and then your final answer. It just takes two seconds to write the 8 minus the 15, right? I don't need to see 2 times 4 and a minus and a parenthesis 3 times 5. I don't need to see that. But show me the 8 times the negative 15, or the 8 minus 15. And so then the final value here of the determinant is what? Negative 7. Right? 8 minus 15 for grand total of negative 7. Okay. So that's not hard. You can do that. So why don't you do E? Which is really F. That's a whole other story. Here, I'll fix it. E sub 2. There you go. Okay, so hopefully it didn't take you too long to say you have a negative 10. And I hope you feel like you have a positive 3. For a final answer of negative 7 again. All determinants are not negative 7. All right, just the two that I just chose. Um, how many got negative 7? Just be careful, right? 5 times a negative 2, negative. So it's negative 1 times negative 3. And then you're adding those two together. Let's throw one more in here. Here, I'll go E sub 2. Uh, do this one. First row, negative 7, 3. Second row, negative 4, 8. Go ahead and do that one. Negative 7, 3. Negative 4, 8. All right, hopefully you're there. And on three, you're going to answer. One, two, three. Okay, I heard mostly a negative 44 because hopefully we can multiply negative 7 times 8. It's a negative 56. And again, it's a negative 3 times a negative 4, right, for a positive 12. And that's a negative 44 would be the determinant for that. Not too bad, 2 by 2. Everybody okay with that? If you've got variables in there, there would be variables. You could have like 3a minus 2z. Okay, that would be the determinant. Couldn't do anything else past that. So don't, don't freak out if there's letters in their variables. Okay, so a 3x3 three three is different. There is a diagonal pattern for a 3x3. Three three. It follows the same concept, only it gets a little bit more complex. 
So here's your first multiplication. All right. So I'm going to come way back here, put a parenthesis, and the first thing you have is a 1 times a 1 times a 1. That's the first diagonal on the 3 by 3. Here, let me get rid of this so I can go higher. Okay, second diagonal. Again, I'm working left to right. Right, so there's that, and then I end up with that third of two. So this is plus, because I'm going left to right, two times two times two on the second left to right diagonal. And now we have a third left to right diagonal for a positive three times three times three. And that's all this first okay so I need everybody to look up at the screen I put this here to help you to see how to do the second part of the matrix so I put that there. Normally, all you have is this. This is the whole thing right here. Just this matrix, this 3 by 3. And the way you find the determinant of this 3 by 3 is first, you go left to right down the three diagonals. Then next, you would go right to left off of this matrix down the diagonals. But I expanded it to give you the concept, okay? So again, let me just be clear here. I put this part here to show you the opposite diagonals. And you'll see that here when we do an example. So the best way to do it with the opposite diagonals is a minus sign and a big parenthesis. So now you're working down the diagonals. What's the first diagonal right to left? A 3 times a 1 times a 2. What's the second diagonal? A 2 times a 3 times a 1. What's the third diagonal? A 1 times a 2 times a 3. Okay, what do we get? 1 plus 8 plus 27. So the front is a 36, I think. And we got a minus... And the back is a 6 plus 6 plus 6. Back is an 18. All right, and I think that's right. So 36 minus 18. So the value of this determinant is 18. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, so, look, some of you guys are better at patterns than others, and if you're not that great at patterns, you just got to get this one down. Just like last night, right, multiplying matrices, you got to go across a row and down a column. There's a pattern there you got to follow. So, same thing here. There's a pattern here that you got to follow. So, one more time, let me just refresh your memory and tell you that I added that, right? I stuck that there. Do you need to write that? No. Nor, I mean, we're usually not going to take the time to write that out, but that's what you're doing. Okay, so let's see if we can do this example J. All right, let me get rid of that. Drive me crazy.
Okay, so this is normally what you have. You got matrix J. We're going to find the determinant. Here, let's use this notation, right? Again, three different ways. Capital D, put the capital letter with the what looks like absolute value symbols, but we're talking determinant. Or I could have said DETJ. Okay, so hopefully the first multiplication is pretty clear to you, right? And again, just because it's in our notes, I'm going to write it out what it is, but I think you'd normally just write 18, right? But write the number 18. Right? But you're going to do a 1 times a 3 times a 6. I'm just doing it now to keep straight so you guys know what in the world we're doing. The second diagonal. So what is the first number of the second diagonal? Say it if you know it. Negative 3, right? Now you could do plus negative 3 if you want. Or if you understand math, you can just write the negative 3. You're going to multiply the negative 3 times the... And you're going to multiply the 4 times the 2. That's the second diagonal. So you got to see that pattern. All right, so give me the numbers of the third diagonal. What times what times what? 5 times negative 2 times negative 1. And that's all going to be that front number. Okay, let me go back up here. I want you guys again to look at this right here. Would you agree I could leave the negative outside that parentheses, total up all the numbers inside that parentheses, and then apply the negative, right? That's what we did. Or I could distribute the negative, right? Can I distribute the negative? So it's up to you how you want to do the back part. I like to distribute the negative as I do it. Some of you, that will be precarious and would be problematic, and you'll make a mistake. So I wouldn't recommend it to everybody because some of you, you'll make a mistake distributing that negative in your head. But that's normally how I would do it. So, you know, normally, all right, I'm going back the other way, so I know I start with a negative 5, right? So I'm going back the other way. Because remember, right to left is always negative. And then times a 3 times a 2, do you agree? So if I'm going to use the parentheses method, if you guys will look at the screen, then i got to put a parentheses here right now, right? If I'm, if I'm going to use the distributive property method, I don't need that parentheses because, again, I'm going to do my second negative when going here. So negative and negative 3 is a positive 3. See how I'm distributing the negative as I go? Again, if you can't handle that, do it the other way. So the second diagonal is negative 3, so negative and negative is positive, so 3 times, say the next number. Negative 2, say the next number. 6. And again, you got to be able to see that pattern. Here, I better do it both ways for those of you here. I'll do above the distributive without distributing. And I'll do it below the way I normally do it. Okay, the last diagonal, again, remember, negative going the opposite way. So I'm going to start out with a negative 1. If you're going to leave the negative out front, you're going to start with positive 1. Say the second and third numbers. Okay, either a lot of you guys have no clue what's going on, or you're just not talking, or you're not looking ahead. But you got to learn the pattern. you got to be thinking as we're going. That last diagonal is the 1 times the 4 times the negative 1. Look, every diagonal has to have three numbers. Do you agree? If I start it with one number, i got to have that right-to-left diagonal that has two numbers in it because you got to end up with three. Every diagonal has to have three numbers. So if you're saying, oh, I don't know where to go next, well, you got to have three numbers. If you start it with a one-number diagonal, you got to end up with the two-number diagonal because you got to end up with three. Okay, so and you got to get your diagonals down. All right, so let's add up all this stuff. So over here, you would finish with a parentheses. Here, I don't need a parentheses. And I didn't finish my 4 and my negative 1, right? 
7 times 4 times negative 1. All right, what in the world do I have? 18, negative 24, and a positive 10. So that's a negative 14, and a positive 18 is a 4 in the front. And the back, this thing is a negative 30. This is a negative 36. And this is a positive 4. So this back part is a negative 62. So it looks like our final value for the determinant of J is a negative 58. You got to be able to do that though. It's just a pattern. Look, the multiplication is not hard. It's adding positive and negative numbers. That's pre-algebra. That's when you were seventh or eighth grader. So that's not hard. Is the pattern extremely difficult? No. Is it a pattern though? Yeah. Can you can you learn it? Yeah. So you just got to make sure that you learn the pattern. Here's where you got to be careful, though. What do you got? One, two, three, four, five, six. So you have six multiplications, and and then so you have six things that you have to figure out what to multiply. Then you have to do the six multiplications, and then you have to do the six additions. So you got lots of probability of making a mistake. Don't make a mistake. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Okay. So what do we say so far? Determine it's simply a value of a process involving matrices. Remember, it's a means to an end. Only square matrices have determinants. Two by twos, not so hard. Going the left to right, you got the positive value. Going right to left, you got the negative value. Pretty simplistic. Get to a three by three, and now you got this diagonal method. So a four by four would be kind of arduous, right? Get this big, humongous thing if it's a 4 by 4 All right, let's go a little bit further. The Laplace expansion for finding the determinant. And who knows if that's how you say his name because I'm from Jersey. Who knows? No polyvoux français. I think he's French. That would be my guess. Um, some also call this um, minors. And again, it's just a means of coming up with the determinant. So let's say you hate the three by three diagonal method. I detest it. Just can't understand it. I have no clue. All right, you can use the Laplace method. So same thing. We're going to end up coming up with the value of the determinant. Again, some call this minors. And there is a value to this, by the way. So, okay, so let me say this as well. Let's say you love the diagonal method. It's so easy. It makes perfect sense to me. Good to go. I'm going to use it every time on a three by three. Therefore, I'll check out on the place. Don't do that. Because as the matrices get bigger and bigger, really the only way to find the determinant in a decent fashion is to use this method. Again, also called minors. So you got to learn both. Okay. On the left is our matrix. So we need to find the value of the determinant of this matrix, and it's all letters. What fun. I'm just giving you a pattern to follow. So here's how you go about figuring out the value of the determinant. So you can see down below. You can see down below. Here's the symbol for the determinant of A. And here's how this one goes. The thing called the plus minus factor. So what happened was we're going to work off the top row. Now here's the thing about the Laplace expansion method. You can work off of any row you want or any column. Any row, any column. And here's the value of that. Let's say you're doing a 5 by 5 ginormous 
But what if you got a column with two zeros in that five by five? See, what ends up happening is the row or column you pick is a multiplier of the resulting little matrix. And if the multiplier is a zero, you don't have to do all that part because zero times anything is zero. That's really where the value of this comes in. So you can really use any row, any column, use this method, and you'll get the value of the determinant. Right? So there are three different rows and three different columns. And so there's six different ways we could do this three by three. And I'm telling you, all six will come up to the same value using course because the determinant is determined. Or the seventh way, use the diagonal method. And all seven will give you the same value of the determinant. Every single one. So again, we're choosing the top row. That's why it's blue. We're working off the top row. So how do you figure it out? First, you got to apply the plus minus factor only to the row you're working on. You say, how do I? I didn't even know how to do that. Well, it's easy. Top left is a plus and everything else alternates from there. So plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. Okay, what you do is I'm going to start with the A. I'm going to blank out the rest of A's row. That's what I did here. And I'm going to blank out the rest of A's column. So let me show it to you on the original. So I blanked out the rest of A's row, and I blanked out the rest of A's column, right? And what's left? The matrix E, F, top row, H, I, bottom row. And that's what I find the determinant of. Well, we know how to do that. This is a 2 by 2. It will be EI minus FH, right? Didn't we just do that in the beginning today? A 2 by 2? So we're figuring out the little determinant of the little 2 by 2. It's like, so this is like nesting dolls. You know, the determinant of the determinant of the determinant, all right? That gives us the whole determinant. It's just the way it is. Okay, there's a big gap, and the only reason there's a big gap is I want it to stay underneath the B. So now I'm doing the B. So look back at the original. So I got to cross out the rest of B's row, right, and the rest of B's column, and see what's left, D, F, G, I. You follow? And now what's the determinant of D, F, G, I, D times I minus F times G, right? times I minus F times G. And now I'm going to do the same thing with C. I'm going to blank out the rest of C's row and C's column and get the determinant of the remaining 2 by 2. Diagonal method, D times H minus E times G. <coughs> and voila. Isn't that beautiful? It's a work of art. And you're going to get the determinant. Now, again, you're going to say that is way more work than the diagonal method. Yes. But again, if it's a 5 by 5, the diagonal method becomes very precarious. Or a 4 by 4. Or a 7 by 7. In reality, programmers make up a program simply that does this. They program it in one time, and it solves every single 5 by 5, every single 8 by 8, every single 10 by 10. Because it just runs through this. And it's a computer, and it can do all the little calculations. It's not a big deal. Okay, so we got to apply this, but that looks like that's going to be on Thursday. And now you know why I did this in two lessons. All right? So quiz tomorrow. Quiz tomorrow.